Welcome to Snack Food for the Soul. Thank you for giving me the privilege to share this time with you each and every week. We're ending October now, and uh, we're at our 42nd Snack Food uh, for the year. And I trust and pray that we're holding true to our promise to you and the Lord, and that these snack foods, if not necessarily life-changing, but they assure you and reassure you of the complexities that you go through are not necessarily your destiny and that your storm need not always be your climate and your climate is not always going to be your destiny. And I know so many of us, and I'm sensing it right now as I'm speaking to you, are going through seasons of fatigue where you're just tired. Fanny Hamer says, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And we get to that where we're just tired of being put upon. We're tired of every single day and every circumstance always having to be a struggle. Nothing comes easy. I've got to work so hard at everything. My kids, my spouse, my partner, my friends, my job, just being in my skin after a while becomes a burden. At some point in life, it, it wasn't always this difficult. Why now? And, and then there's some days you just realize, and wow, Holy Spirit, <laughs> you really have something to say. There, there's sometimes I know you could be walking up a staircase or getting in an elevator, and it feels like you're carrying every single person you know on your shoulders. Well, take comfort, beloved, that, and last week's snack food was about comfort. Take comfort in knowing that God sees, he hears, and he cares. The Bible is replete with scriptures that speaks about God's ability to listen to you. That if he made eyes, he can see. If he formulated your ears, he can hear. That's in Psalms. And, 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 and he's so careful, he's such a loving father. He's a God of detail. He's, he's a man that cannot lie. And he's a man that is so much the absolute of himself, he can swear by no other greater authority than by himself. He's immutable. And, and that's the God that we serve. And understanding that there are days you may feel lonely, but rest assured, I promise you, you're never alone. He knows, he sees. He cares. And sometimes you just need to just console yourself with the fact that Jesus is Lord. In fact, say that with me. Jesus is Lord. And I think sometimes you need to hear yourself say that. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And sometimes you just have to say things to encourage yourself. Jesus is Lord. In your finances, Jesus is Lord. In your health, Jesus is Lord. In your relationships, in your jobs, and 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 in all of the tumult that is going on between your ears, Jesus is Lord. He's masterful, he's careful, and he's such a God of detail. And, and today's snack food is about the God of our detail. And, and, and take courage and understanding that Oh, dear Lord, if he's going to tell me, and this snack food started off going to be something different. I can't even begin to tell you, but as I'm telling you, as I'm talking to you, this is how he deals with me. God moves at a speed of thought. He speaks in complete thoughts. He doesn't stammer. He, he, he doesn't suffer from Alzheimer's or dementia. He knows exactly. He's keeping tabs of every aspect of your life. And he knows what you need to hear at the very moment. These snack foods may not be for everyone, but they're for someone. And he'll leave the 99 for that one lost sheep. And today he wants you to know that the detail he's observing is your life. And I want to share with you, um, uh, I adjusted it a little bit. I'm going to talk about Luke 12, 6 and 7, and Luke 12, 24 and 32. And I'm going to read these to you just so you can hear it. Hear them be assured of God. I'm going to share a story uh, with you about God's attention to detail and how it, 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 it changed my life. Um, Luke 12, 6 and 7 says, Are not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God? But even in the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. And then... Uh, this one is a little lengthy, but I'm going to read the words and I want you to hear the words and I want you to study this in your own and I want you to recite to your circumstances that may seem to be daunting and huge. Start bragging to them about how much bigger your God is. And sometimes you need to be reminded, take a look back at what he's already done for you that you thought, oh dear Lord, let's not be like the children of Israel. Let's not love him based on the last deed that he's done. 
Let's love him because of who he is. If God didn't do one more thing in your life, would he cease to be God? Would he cease to be God? So take courage in that, beloved, that he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. We change. Our circumstances change. But our God, oh my God, Jehovah Jireh, oh, he never, ever changes. Ah, he's a God that provides. Luke 12, 24 and 32 says, Consider the ravens, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than fowls? Mm. And which of you, with taking thought, can add to this stature one cubit? You can't add anything to the size and the complexity of life by worrying. Huh? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Don't look at this whole mountain and say, you know what, I can't handle this, so how can I handle that? Maybe none of it's for you to handle, man. Speak to that mountain, reminded of who your God is. Consider the, lily, the lilies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. Yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field and tomorrow and cast into, into the oven, how much more will he clothe ye, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth that ye need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And finally, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. I think of a father, the things that I want to give my children. Oh, I want them to have so much more than their dad ever had. And so much more that our Father in Heaven wants to give us. So think of the detail that God has made the tabernacle. In the Old Testament, he had 1,600 and about 31 Mosaic laws. 631 of them. So it wasn't just the Ten Commandments. There were 600 of them. And a lot of these laws, and you'll find them in Leviticus and, 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 and Ecclesiastes, and you'll understand the, how pivotal detail is to God. The way that the priest had to slaughter an animal for a sacrifice, what he did with the legs, what he did with the intestines, the fat that was on the liver, what he did with the head, what he did with the hooves, and, and, and how he would burn certain things. Certain things were sacrificed on the northern part of the altar. Other things were on the corner, and some things, and, and basically the priest was the butcher. And the butcher had to be of a stature because some of these animals weighed 150, 200 pounds, and he had to pick these animals up. And, 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 and you never thought about that, many of us. But in understanding the detail of God that these butchers took care in how they prepared the animal. They took care in how it smelled when the, the, the incense was burnt and, and how the flames consumed the animal and, and that the sin was forgiven. There wasn't as much care for the sinner as there was for the sin sacrifice. There wasn't relationship, there wasn't love. But God kept that detail, but he was so detailed that man couldn't follow God's detail because man is imperfect, trying to serve a perfect God. And so what, he, what was missing was having God on the inside to govern us, not laws on the outside to instruct us. So understanding that God's degree of detail is such that he will number the hairs on your head He'll hang stars in the galaxies. Specifically, if they were off 100 feet, it would devastate the system. And how many times do we pay attention to his detail for us in our lives? We pay attention to the details of getting your children ready, how you, you adorn yourself, getting ready for work or school. You, you take care and, and, and make sure your socks match, <laughs> taking, making sure that your undergarments are in good, in good condition. But you take the same care in observing what God wants for you in that relationship. There are certain times, that, you know, there are people that present who they are in our, in, in our lives, and we don't want to believe what they're telling us. 
They're showing themselves to be bad people, but we don't want to believe that, so we try to think the best of them, and then we marry them, or we get into long-term relationships with them, and then we regret the, the decisions we made. But God has been telling us that major detail for the longest. And, and, and we have to understand that if you see certain things in your children as a child that you were as a child, address that. Especially if that was a part of your character that was or could have been a part of your downfall. If it's a generational curse. If there are things in your child like temper tantrum, selfishness, uh, the, the proclivities to lie, steal, beg, borrow, whatever the case is, you have to address that. The best instruction manual for your child is you. And you need to understand the, DN, the genetic, genetic predisposition that people in your family line have had. You may not be an alcoholic. You may not even like the taste of cough medicine. Uh, but maybe your great-great-grandmother, grandfather was an alcoholic. You need to find out what's in your family line. And you need to address those details in your children. And you need to own your truth. What is your truth? Maybe there's some things inside of you you've never dealt with, but you're seeing that come to fruition in your child. Beloved, you have to pay attention to detail. And sometimes God will completely derail your train because he's been telling you through signals that were amber, slow down until finally you're coming to a cliff. So he's gonna run you into the dirt and you're messed up. You're bruised, you're tattered, you're torn, you're embarrassed, you're feeling shame, but it beats your demise. So sometimes he wants us to pump the brakes a little bit and don't go gung ho because everything seems right. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof is death. Broad is the gate, and wide is the path that leads to destruction. And you've heard the straight and the narrow. Beloved, take note of the detail in your life. Stop wanting to be the life of the party and being the loudest person in the room, and start observing who's laughing with you and who's really laughing at you. Look at people's body language. Don't feel the need to always try to get your point across, and you've heard me say this before, so don't be so concerned about getting your point across that you miss the dialogue between you and the other person or the other people around you. Sometimes it's better to be silent and to be thought a fool than to open up your mouth and remove all doubt. Sometimes just pure and sheer foolishness comes out of our mouths because we're not used to paying attention to what's really going on. Everyone else sees what's going on except us. And there we go flailing our tongues and our lips and our ignorance into the wind so that everybody can catch the stench of your lack of maturity. So I say to you, our God of our detail is stop worrying about stirring the pot and waving your hands in the air and like you just don't care. No, and waving your hands in the air uh, for everybody to see who you are. Sometimes just Rest in the comfort and the confines of God's care and what he's preordained for you. A detail in my life I'll share with you is several years ago, I was serving in a church and uh, a major uh, uh, um, evangelist was coming to town. Well, I'll share. His name is Dr. Jesse Duplantis. And um, uh, I was a fan of Dr. Duplantis because he's a great teacher. The man memorizes chapters of the Bible and he's just such a great student. And, and, you know, we get into, you know, people and what they preach and what they, I don't get into that. I was into the gift that God gave the man. And he was coming to minister to church. And that particular week, it was not a great week. It probably wasn't a great month for me. But I was um, the, uh, I guess you would say the armor bearer to the pastor. And I was over a lot of different things. Uh, one of the senior elders. And uh, my job was to take care of the detail. And... I made sure that everything was taken care of so that my pastor didn't have to worry about anything. And um, uh, part of the detail was getting the information of, um, of, of uh, Dr. Duplantis' flight. Uh, he flew charter and uh, he had someone to drive him to the, to the, uh, the church and, and so forth. And I'm getting ready for the service that night. I'm in the shower, I'm at home, and I just felt really put upon. And all that detail is not important, but I just was very tired. And I remember weeping before the Lord and saying, Lord, I just don't, don't want to do this anymore. Not ministry. I didn't want to be at that church anymore. And I didn't want to be part of that ministry anymore. And um, the Lord just reminded me of the comfort that 
he is rooting me on and he's cheering for me. And he reminded me of the peace I got when I was with my grandmother. My grandmother and I were very, very close and, and the Lord would remind me what she told me that I'm the fulfillment of a promise that God made to her before I was even born. And it, it, it was just an amazing time I had and he shared some things with me. He reminded me of her eyes. He reminded me of the things that he, she would say with him privately and people would think when they came across her in her study that she was talking to herself but she was talking to the Lord and so came that night uh, Dr. Duplantis came and there were thousands of people who came to visit uh, people in RVs from all over the state of Florida and all over the region came to see him and um, I was to be um, his armor bearer that night and I uh, took care of the man as I did and I sat in a front row next to my pastor and he started to minister and he ministered in an amazing way as he always does. And at one point, he looked right at me and he said something about there are days when I'm in my study and I'm talking to myself, seemingly, but I'm talking to the Lord. And my wife would come downstairs and hear me and she'd get jealous saying that I want what he, what he has with you, Lord. And, and then he looked right at me with his eyes and these steel blue eyes all of a sudden became a hazel brown and looked at me with the same intensity that my grandmother would look at me and assured me with the same peace that my grandmother would. And for that moment, I smelled the very peace of my grandmother's fragrance, the texture of her long, thick, flowing hair, and, and, and the tenderness of her hands holding me against her bosom, as she did. And I just got overwhelmed and I let out this scream. I went, whoa! And everybody on that first row with me, I think, must have rose about three feet off the chair. And so Dr. Duplantis finished his message, and I, I went into the study to make sure he was okay. And he, he, there was the meeting and greeting and photos and all that stuff with people. And I'm going somewhere with this. And I walked in to make sure he was fine. He said, come on in. And I stood there, and I just got overwhelmed with emotion. I just, because the Lord just remembered what I needed was some assurance. And then... He looked at me and he said, you know, um, I wondered what this camp meeting would be about. And I didn't know. And, you know, preachers, when they're going somewhere, the Lord tells them where they're going and of course, obviously where they're going, but why they're going, what the message is. But he said the Lord did not give him that this trip. He was wondering, why am I here? Why am I here? Well, specifically, the Lord kept him in the dark. And he looked at me and he said, I came here for you. Woo, man, waterworks. I almost felt, fell to my knees. I felt literally the muscles in my, knee, my knees just collapsing. And, and my legs just, I was about to pass out. And I, I went over to him and, and I greeted him uh, again. And I gave him a hug and I said, you don't know how much I needed that. He goes, oh, I know. He says, he, he hugged me, he said, I know, Papa. I know, the Lord knows. He just told me right this very second why I came here. One year later, uh, Dr. Duplantis is coming back, and this time I'm the one picking him up at the airport, and I'm his uh, driver. And I picked him up, pulled up to the plane, got off the plane, got in my truck, and um, we're driving to the church. And uh, I said, I don't know if you remember last year. He goes, oh, I remember. And he said, let me tell you some things I never told you. He said, I'm on that plane in my meditation. I'm flying in to Orlando. I asked him, why am I going here? Who are these people? And one of his uh, former co-workers attended that church, and I guess he was doing it as a favor, but he still didn't get clarity from the Lord as to what am I here for? And he said, when I saw you and heard you yell out, God made it clear to me, this is the young man you're here for. He is valuable to me, and he needed a personal message from me, and he needed to know how important he was that this entire presentation, huge event, I mean thousands of people, and all the detail, all the travel, all the planning, God said, I need him to know all of this was for him. Oh man, and I, I'm driving and tears came to my eyes. He says, Papa, you don't have to cry, Papa. God wants you to know how much he loves you, how special you, and he addressed me by name. He said, Sean, God loves you, man. And I'm sitting here with you, and then he showed me on his hand. He had goose pimples on his hands. He really loves you. you. There's an anointing on your life that is an amazing thing to me, and I'm awestruck by it. I'm just grateful to be in this car with you. I was so blessed. He said, God sent me here for you. 
I thought back, beloved, to being in that shower that day and telling the Lord how tired I was. And just I needed to hear and feel your assurance, Lord. I needed your kind and tender touch to remind me that my little life and all of the complexities of my life and all of the, the, the detail I take care of for everybody, make sure everybody's so comfortable and happy that, that I'm still your son. And daddy, can you, can you sit me on your lap and just assure me? And, and, and sometimes, beloved, we just need to be reminded that we're somebody's child too. Although we're everybody's anchor, we're everybody's general, we're everybody's frontline defense, that we are special in the eyes of God and that we can be someone's child and we can cry to him. And, 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 and that reminded me, and a year later, the same man is telling me the same things all over as if it happened yesterday. God put that in a capsule and, and had it ready for me to open up and share with a man of God that I admire so much. And he just put his hand on, on my hand as we were driving and he said a prayer with me and that thing just lifted me, man. Well, that night, we're um, taking him back to his plane and I asked him, can I bring my family with me? Uh, they're, you know, we're all big fans and we all drove in a car together. My wife baked him a cake and uh, he called his plane to let him know he's bringing some company. And uh, we all went on the plane together and sat and just had fellowship for about 15, 20 minutes, just talked. And my kids, the first time they're on a, on a Learjet, <laughs> they're on a uh, $20 million airplane. And, and all that was nice. But I think what was really nicer was he and I share the same father. And the Lord that day sent my big brother to tell his little brother that daddy told me to tell you this. So in this season that you're going through, daddy told me to tell you that everything you see in your life means nothing to him, not nearly as much as you mean to him. And sometimes there are people in your life that are going through storms. There's some people in, in your life that are seemingly going through hell and the enemy is attacking them to get you off your game. Sometimes, that's right, you matter that much that God can topple a company to get you to leave, to put you in the right place. You mean that much. God can topple a two, three hundred million dollar company to get you to be in a different place. God can cause an entire region of an airport, air traffic to shut down so that you don't get to that city on that day to meet your demise. God can get you so that cable gets shut down in an entire region of area so that you don't watch a TV show or see something that can make you fall back into that snare of that sin and that struggle and that addiction that you've been struggling with. God can have it so that you cannot even get into a restaurant. He'll burn a restaurant down so that you don't go there and run into someone you used to date that will trip you up for the rest of your life and cause you your marriage, your sanity, and your destiny. You matter that much. So please understand that when you get on a plane or a train or you get into something that it's got some inherent danger to it. God will have that plane land in spite of the circumstances, the storms, the technical difficulties. He'll have that plane land and those hundreds of people get there safely because you're on that plane. God will prevent that building from burning down because you work there. God will prevent that carbon monoxide poisoning from, 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 from killing your entire family and dissipate into the air because of your presence in that home. God will keep your children from being hurt from, from, by dodging stray bullets and, and cars running up on sidewalks and bullying and, and terrorist attacks of any kind because of your prayers over them. God will keep things from happening or cause things to happen just because of you. You are that major, not minor, you are that major detail that's necessary to him. So God has numbered the hairs on your head and understand that birds don't care where they sleep. They have no concern of what they're gonna drink, but he feeds them. Take comfort, but understand also, our God of detail, oh, he's amazing at that. 
take their peace and understanding. Your life is a detail that's important to him. And understand that the details in your life that he's sending you to observe are mutually important. Slow down a little bit, beloved. Ask the Lord of this universe, your savior, to show you how enormous and how important the details in your life are, how important they are to your life and to the lives of those you love and touch. So my prayer for you this week is understand that God has made you and formed and fashioned you. You are the apple of his eye and there are about six billion of us on this planet, but that's what makes him God and not us, that he can love us all individually Mm. individually enough to care for the fact that you haven't had anything to eat today. The fact that you're worrying about not that bill being paid and something being taken from you. He knows and he cares. So rest in his peace and give the burden to him. His shoulders are stronger. His hands are bigger and his arms are capable to wrap around your circumstance. Where he just wants you to rest in him. And be reminded that he's your father. He's your ultimate parent. So father, console my brother, my sister. Give them the courage and give them the ability to streamline their lives by paying more attention to the detail than the complexities. Father, give them the courage and the protection that they need. A hedge of protection to guide them and comfort them. In Jesus' mighty name. Beloved, I pray this blessed you and I pray it encouraged you. God bless you. Have an indescribably blessed week. I love you and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it.